Tim, yeah. I would love to I'd love to hear what you have to say about this one. This is Apple's response to what's happened today. Apple has removed WikiLeaks app from wow. the App Store. Wow. Well, I mean, Apple, as we all know, is a deep state uh, contributor and uh, participates in mass surveillance, opening their products to U.S. backdoors. Uh, and that's why their products are no longer successful in countries like China uh, because and their market share is dropping because the Chinese know very well uh, what kind of spyware uh, the U.S. government is putting into these uh, products. And that is also the very reason why the U.S. government is so strongly opposed to Huawei uh, getting contracts in Five Eyes Nations because they are uh, scared that the Chinese will do exactly the same thing that the U.S. has been doing for a decade now and install backdoors in their devices and in their technology. And, of course, the U.S. Uh, uh, is responsible for this arms race uh, of spying. Um, and it's just uh, hypocrisy for the US to point the finger at Huawei and at the same time undermining uh, the technology that comes out of the US by installing backdoors into every router, into every communication product, into every, every phone in your home is an open mic, an open camera. And that is what the US has come to, you know? So uh, to see a statement like this from Apple and these types of actions, not surprising at all. They are all in bed with the deep state. The CEOs of those companies are treated as special citizens with special protections by the deep state. They would never be prosecuted for any of their crimes and privacy intrusions because they are in bed with the shadiest people in the world that are actually the world's largest criminal conspiracy by mass surveilling the world population. Imagine, uh, you know, the amount of data that the US government pirates and steals from innocent civilians, including their own citizens on a massive scale every day. And here they are pointing the finger at Huawei. So, yeah, I'm not surprised at all that Apple would uh, participate in this. It's also another smear against Assange with all the many Apple users and people who look up to that company. Now, uh, he's, a, he's a bad guy in Apple's eyes as well. Yeah. I would like to um, take a little walk down memory lane to an article that I wrote called Understanding World War Three. And in that article, I talked about a group called that Hitler called the Poison Kitchen. The Poison Kitchen was the last remaining publishers in Weimar Republic who opposed Hitler and the SS. And I just want to read you a couple of passages about them because to me, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks now are the Poison Kitchen. And I said on my Twitter a short time ago, beware anyone who tells you what is happening to Julian Assange is okay they would be the first to lead you to the ovens. We saw today, when we saw Julian's face when he came out of the embassy, when we saw the physical condition of him, we saw the truth. For all of these years, we've been told he's in the lap of luxury, he's being taken care of, he's living like a king. We've been told, care about his smelly socks, care about whether he's cleaning his kitchen, care about the most ridiculous and banal things, care about his cat. We've been told, don't look at him being tortured. Don't look at his physical condition. His, they wouldn't let us see him. They wouldn't let us hear his words. And that's because they were covering up the truth of what was being done to him. And when he emerged today, we saw the truth. We saw the truth and the media have been covering that up. The media are absolutely complicit. So this is why I would like to now read you this passage about the poison kitchen. For the propaganda of the state to thrive, there must be a wholesale subjugation of the press. This can be achieved economically through mergers and acquisitions of the corporations that own them. It can be accomplished through smear campaigns and career disadvantages for those who refuse to toe the line. If none of that works, then there is the outright criminalization of the truth and the persecution of those who tell it. 
Hitler deemed the Munich Post, a publication run by some of his most vociferous critics, social democrats in Munich, the Poison Kitchen. The Poison Kitchen's suspicion and criticisms of Hitler date back to 1921. This half dozen journalists and editors spent a dozen years publishing truths that the world didn't take seriously enough. Ignoring the warnings of Hitler's critics ultimately cost an estimated 60 million human lives. The Holocaust Chronicle states that in Nazi circles, the Munich Post became known as the Poison Kitchen. Prior to the Nazi takeover in 1933, the Hitler Party tried to silence the Post with libel suits and death threats against its staff. Sound familiar? Nevertheless, the newspaper's anti-Nazi resistance continued. Well into February 1933, the Post continued to publish reports about political murders carried out by the Nazis. Among its final anti-Hitler accounts was a three-part series that valiantly tried to counter what the Post had long regarded as Hitler's most destructive characteristic, his willful falsification of history, aka fake news. The Post foresaw Hitler's aims as disastrous for Germany and the world, its views, however, did not prevail. Before the 1932 to 33 winter had ended, the Post's anti-Hitler reporting was smashed, its courageous journalists imprisoned or killed. Sarah Toogood in a history paper about the Munich Post, published by the University of California, Santa Barbara writes, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party rigorously censored the news and media immediately after Hitler gained power in Germany and throughout World War II. This extensive censorship made it impossible for any newspaper to stop or even obstruct Hitler in his political, Germany to, uh, his political journey to exterminate non-Aryans during this powerful reign. The Post was relentless in its reportings of the secret death squad called Cell G. They had been caught red-handed trying to assassinate members of the Nazi party that had been exposed and held responsible for insider leaks. The last of a series of articles on this squad quoted Hitler saying, nothing happens in the movement without my knowledge, without my approval, even more nothing happens without my wish. This quote directly linked Hitler to the murders and covert violence. As Hitler took power and death squads openly operated in broad daylight, the feverish warnings of the poison kitchen became even more desperate. One author quoted in the text describes the Munich Post as Cassandra-like in reference to the Trojan prophetess who forewarns of the fall of Troy, but is ignored. And as their own demise became ever more inevitable, a fact of which, which they must have been well aware, still they tried to diligently report on travesties in no uncertain terms. After 12 years of valiantly trying to warn the world about Hitler, these truth tellers were silenced. For another 12 years thereafter, Hitler's regime would rampage across Europe, devastating country after country and causing the deaths of tens of millions of people. Even in this modern day, real journalists are often martyred for living up to the ideals of their profession. True journalism is a public service and a service to the historical record. To tell the unpopular truth about nefarious power, no matter the risk. While the perilous days of the poison kitchen may seem long behind us, the preconditions for such a reoccurrence surround us. Journalists around the world are in many cases being spied on and illegally monitored by their government using high-tech equipment and corresponding laws that were designed for combating terrorism. And it continues, but it is so abundantly clear to me that WikiLeaks is today's modern day poison kitchen. And it is fascists who want to kill Julian Assange who want to shut him down by any means necessary, who want to silence him, who have tortured him into the physical condition that we saw today, who have been hunting and surveilling his associates for years. And it is completely unacceptable. And we need to learn from history. We need to stand up and protect those last truth-telling journalists who we have in this world, putting their bodies and lives on the line for the truth. And with that, I welcome George Simuli to the stream. Hi, George. Yeah, yeah hi, Susie. Well, I, I agree with you, Susie, about the, the fascists, but unfortunately also it's the liberals who have been persecuting Julian Assange, and it's the liberals who are today um, 
celebrating and high-fiving one another uh, that they finally have um, a Julian Assange in their custody. And it's liberals who have persuaded themselves that somehow uh, Julian Assange has brought uh, this, the evil of Donald Trump onto the world. And if only Assange had not intervened, then we would have had this wonderful liberal uh, regime of um, Hillary Clinton. So the, the peculiarity of the um, American um, empire, as, as um, Noam Chomsky has often um, explained, is that it is outwardly liberal. I mean, it um, espouses liberal ideas. It adheres to liberal principles, you know, free media, uh, freedom of assembly, uh, and so on and so forth. And, you know, th those who are actually the enemies of power are somehow declared to be enemies of uh, freedom. So today when Jeremy Hunt um, uh, announced triumphantly that, well, we've got uh, Julian Assange in our hands, he promptly said that somehow he has been violating truth, that Julian Assange is the enemy of truth. He is the enemy of freedom. He's the enemy of the rule of law even as he's violating every law on the books, international law, domestic law, everything, even if as he's violating media freedom, he somehow presents it as if, well, the British government is standing for all of these things. And it's Julian Assange who is the enemy of truth, freedom, and the law. So it's, it's, it's a peculiar kind of poisonous feature of a kind of the, the contemporary liberal imperial state that, uh, you know, we have to combat.